OK, so I'm going to go ahead and. Now I sent y'all a slide that basically had the functions on it or uh, look in the look in the um, look in the file section of the bulletin board and it shows you the things that you need to worry about. Uh, let's go back and talk about family of graphs here. F of X is equal to A times X plus H quantity squared plus K. F of X is equal to A absolute value X plus H plus K. Absolute, I meant F of X is equal to A X plus H to the third power plus K. Now, some of y'all, I think we went over this in the review, but I can't remember. Did we do parent graphs, vertical and horizontal shifts yes. in the review? No, sir, I don't think so. We no, did? Sir. No, sir. Okay, well, this either. should be your algebra two or your 110 that you had a couple of semesters ago. What does the A give us? And what does the H give us? And what does the K give us? Does A give you the vertical shift? Okay, H gives us, a K gives us the vertical shift. Okay, then H, then H is the horizontal shift. H is the horizontal shift. Okay. And A gives you whether- Orientation. Yes. Okay, horizontal is always the opposite here. Okay, orientation, if A is between zero and one, meaning a fraction, a proper fraction, it is wide, meaning that it is stretched along the x-axis and compressed along the y-axis. Uh, if A is equal to one, that is your normal parabola or your normal, uh, your parent graph, meaning the one you compare everything to. If A is greater than one, then you basically have a skinny parabola, which means it is compressed along the y-axis, I'm sorry, compressed along the x-axis and stretched along the y-axis. So hopefully this is giving you all some kind of memory, uh, jar, jar your memory a little bit. Horizontal uh, shift is always going to be the opposite of H. So if H is negative three, that means three to the right. If H is positive, that means three to the left. Or positive three, that means three to the left. The vertical shift is what it is. If it's positive, it's up. If it's negative, it's down. All this kind of jar your memory a little bit? Yes, sir. All right. Now, you've got to take this into your 9.6 or 9.6 and 9.7 because the only thing I'm going to talk about is the sine, cosine, and tan. And you should be able to graph these functions on your calculator and be able to ascertain all the stuff that you need to ascertain because this stuff I can rewrite using what we just did right here. Say the sine two times the sine of X plus three minus four. I can say negative three times the cosine of X minus two plus six. And I can say negative one or negative tan of X plus two minus three. This is your orientation, which means your amplitude. This is your horizontal shift. This is your vertical shift. So does everybody understand that you take your algebra stuff that you learned and you apply it to the trig functions when you're graphing. Basically the same stuff you learned. There are a couple of differences. 
Okay, let's get into those. Oops. And that's what they're telling you right here, periodic function and period. The smallest possible positive value is the period of the function. OK. All right, here we go. This is the sine function. Now I want you to be able to graph the sine, the cosine and the tangent and different variations of it. And I want you to also remember. That. What is the sine, cosine, and tan? Well, take your unit circle. This is zero, two pi, pi over two, pi, three pi over two. And I want you to disconnect it right here, like a bracelet, and I want you to unroll it. And when you unroll it, you get zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. And that is one period. You unroll it, this is what you get. You get zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. And when you look at the handy dandy, that's what you get. Zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. And if you go in the negative direction, negative pi over two, negative pi, three pi over two, and two pi. So hopefully somebody has shown you that before. If you unroll and remember what is our what is our cosine right here? Well, that'd be one comma zero. Negative one comma zero. What is your cosine here? Zero one and zero what? Negative one. So I'm going to let's see one zero. At at at. So I got one right there. So when you go back to the there we go. Pi over two is equal to one. Pi is equal to zero. Three pi over two is equal to negative one. And two pi is equal to zero. So if you were to unroll this unit circle, this is what you'd get. So think about breaking the unit circle right here and unrolling it. This is what you would get. I know somebody has had to show, oh, I'm sorry. Somebody had to show you this sometime if you've had pre-cal or trig or something, hopefully you understand that the, and, and the reason this is a period is because this is one revolution. So you could say that the period is equal to one revolution. Now, of course, the cosine would be this. So the cosine is one, so I'm going to do the cosine right quick, and I'll do it in so cosine is one at zero. And pi over two, we got zero, that's the cosine. And negative one and zero and one. And this is the cosine curve. So is it basically like you're just plugging in the numbers for the sine yep. and cosine of it? Okay. Now it changes when they add some stuff to it, like the vertical and the horizontal shift. Like if I so right now, the black 
is f of x is equal to 1 times the sine of x plus 0 plus 0. Okay, if you condense this down, you get f of x is equal to the sine. All right, what is the orientation? Well, it's the normal curve, it's 1. What is your horizontal shift? 0. What is your vertical shift? Zero, so it starts at origin. Okay, same thing with the cosine. All right, now the vertical shift is one on the cosine, but the reason that is is because this guy right there starts off with one. Okay, so you can say that there is a vertical shift, but not really because the whole thing would shift up. So it would look like this f of x is equal to one cosine of x plus zero plus zero. And that would be f of x is equal to cosine of x. And that is the green line. Now, if it had a one right here and a one right here, then we would move that green line one to the left, negative one. If that was a positive one, so like cosine of x plus one, and then plus one, and then we would move that green line up one, and it would be like that. Okay, so we've got to, you've got to put in consideration what you did with the parabolas back in, you know, here's your normal parabola. F of X is equal to X squared. And then f of x, wait a minute, f of x is equal to negative x squared. Well, that's the same thing, only it goes like this. And then you got f of x is equal to x plus 2 quantity squared. Well, that's a horizontal shift 2 to the left. Okay, and then we got f of x is equal to x minus 2 quantity squared plus 1. Well, that means you move to the right two places and up one place. So now you've got the parabola looking like this. So now you have to apply these same things that you learned in algebra, you need to apply them now to the sine and the cosine curve. And that's basically what we're going to be doing in 9.6 and 9.7. But for your purposes, and I've got this thing all messed up now, uh, for your purposes, we're going to do a lot of it on the calculator. So there's that. And of course, you can do that. And they're telling you basically you're unrolling the, um, the, the, the unit circle is basically what they're telling you from zero to two pi. And there's the cosine curve. And you see that it starts right here because the cosine of zero degrees is one. And there, show you. Cosine of zero is one. Quick question. Yes. Are we going to also be dealing with vertical asymptotes in this section? Why, well, not a lot, no. You okay. do that basically. Now, you're going to see it in calculus again, um, but you're not going to see it in this class. Okay, thank you. So you, you need to review back to your uh, college algebra folder for that. Um, let's see, hold on just a second. There we go, symmetrical. OK, here we go. Here's the orientation. Let's see, they've got a two in front of this one. What does that two do? Well, it basically tells you that the max was one. But when you see that two there, that means that it's going to go up. 
to two instead of one. All right, so that tells you if you've got a two, if A is greater than one, that means you're going to have a higher curve, just like we did with uh, A in the in the algebra. So if you have A is greater than one, then it's going to stretch your curve. I'm trying to get there. If A is greater than one, then you're basically stretching by the factor of A. So if I give you Y or F of X is equal to two sine theta, then you know instead of your basic model, which goes like this, it's going to be like that, where the original went to one, now you're going to two. And if you think about it, the values here are going to be the same. You're just going to multiply them by A. So that would make sense why everything goes up to two. And of course, the negative be the same. It was negative one, now it's negative two. So if this is a three, then it would go up to three. If it's a four, it would go up to four. And it would be a whole lot skinnier and then it'd come back down. Crosses at the same place, sorry. Crosses at the same place and ends at the same place, but the, the amplitude, I mean, not the amplitude, is higher. The value for Y is higher. And again, I don't know how much of you know this on how you don't know it, but, and you can see you're just basically multiplying by two. That factor, you multiply by two. This one, you multiply by two. So the A is just telling you it's multiplying by a factor of two. There we go, amplitude. The amplitude function is half the difference between the maximum and minimum values. So you need to write that down. The amplitude is half the difference between the max and min values. So you take your maximum value, your min value, and you subtract them, and then you basically get the amplitude, which is one. I mean, you subtract them and divide by two. So max minus min over two. So of course, with the sine curve, your max is one, your min is negative one, you subtract them, and you get two, you multiply that by one half, and the amplitude of this function is one. And uh, basically the amplitude is whatever your highest and lowest is, it's the absolute value. Okay, graphing y is equal to, now b, what is b? b is going to be called the period. Write this down. Period is equal to 2 pi over b. Write that down. That's very important. So if you've got a number in front of your x, that means that you're going to be plugging it in here. Now this is just with the sine and the cosine and the tangent. Now this is the only place where you actually have to calculate something in 9.6 and 9.7, right here. So you might want to write it down, two pi over b. So if it was, if that was four x, it would be two pi over four and then it would be pi over two. So your period would be pi over two. And they're just showing you right there.
and that would give us the period shifts, and you'd have to add them. So what's zero plus pi over four? Pi over four. What's pi over four plus pi over four? Pi over eight or pi over two, which two pi over, I think, let's see. What did I get? Two pi over two, which is pi. Let's see, the graph will complete one period, the endpoints are fewer and pi. The three points between them are, okay, I'm sorry. You take the zero to pi over two, you add them, divide by two. Zero to pi, divide by two. And pi over two plus pi, divide by two. And that gives you these numbers right here. It'll be easier when we go over an example. Uh, plot the points from the table for sine two x given earlier. Just okay, you can do that on the calculator. Uh, whenever we put a number here, and I'm gonna move on. So it would appear two pi over b. Main thing is make sure you know how to do two pi over b. There we go. So here we go with an example. Y is equal, and this would be a Prime example of a test question I would give you. Y is equal to two thirds X. Now, before we even start, I'm gonna go ahead and graph it. Make sure it's in degree mode. Mode, degree, let's see. Might want to leave it in radian mode, yeah. Let's see if it's graph it. Y is equal to two third cosine of two thirds x parentheses x graph and zoom standard. Well, that don't look right. Let me see if I've got it right. I bet I, bet I need to put it in degree mode. No. Nope. It should give us something besides that. Have I got it typed in right? Cosine of two thirds X, it should not be a straight line. Hmm. Huh. Make sure maybe, I'm... Maybe if you try huh? two X over three. That Maybe that's difference? it. I don't know why it's doing that. Sine of two thirds X. Oh, shoot. I hate when I use the keyboard. I can't use the keyboard. I got to use this. So two X over three. Now, something's going on. That's not right. It's not supposed to do that. That's not right. Zoom. Is y'all, if y'all graphing on yours, can you graph two thirds Y, two thirds X? See if you can graph it on your calculator. I think you have to use like double parentheses. So you okay, put it. Let's in. try that. Okay, Y is equal to cosine of 2x, I like 2 thirds x, so I'm going to do 2 thirds and then x, and it's not going to like that either. 2 thirds x and then close parentheses. Let's try that. I'm still not doing it. Why is he? I don't understand why it's not doing it. I've never had this trouble before. Cosine of two divided by three, close parentheses, x. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss for words, but if anyway, you, two thirds is B. You would take two thirds and divide it by uh, two pi and divide it by two thirds, you get three pi. So the period is between zero and three pi. 
And now you divide into four points. There you go. Now, the calculator will automatically do this if I could ever get it to freaking, I don't know why it won't graph. Let me go back to right quick. I'm going to pull up. If you look at my comment in the chat, I got it to work putting it in my calculator that way. And what did you do? The cosine parenthesis, parenthesis, two thirds, parenthesis, parenthesis, and then X on the outside. Okay, let's try that then. I've never had a problem typing it in. I don't know why all of a sudden I'm having a problem. Parenthesis, parenthesis. Second insert, parenthesis. Okay, I thought I had that a while ago, but evidently I didn't. You, you need one more parenthesis. Yeah, there we go. And graph. See? That's not right. Did yours graph a straight line? No, I have the one that the same one that's in the book for the example, and I did it that way, and it has the. Okay, let me see. What do you do? You have radians or degree? I am in radians. That might be it. Oh, I bet I know what it is. Hold on, second stat plot. No. I've got something turned off on mine. Something, I'll have to look it up. There's something wrong with my calculator or somebody. Are all of you getting a straight line or are you getting a curve? I got the curve. There's something on my calculator not right. Mode? I don't see why it should be. Okay, I'll just have to. I, I don't know what. I don't know what it is. I'm sorry. I don't know. Let me delete the whole thing. I tell you what. Let's do this. Let's just say cosine of x. If it does cosine of x wrong, then I know something's wrong. Cosine of x. Close parenthesis. Okay, so I'm typing something in wrong. Because this type of there it is, zoom standard, zoom standard six or zoom fit, zoom zero. So it should be doing so. Y is equal to I'm going to type in two. Divided by three. Close parenthesis. Open parenthesis X. I did something else and I uh, also got it. There. Let me hit zoom out and see. Maybe uh, maybe that's what's happening. Do you want to try uh, this? This is what I did and um. It worked for me at least. What did you do? I did what uh, Miss Harbit did, and she said put in the cosine of two over three x, and then graph it. I was having the same problem you were, and then I graphed it as she did, and that's how I got the curve. Yeah, but two over three x is not the same. You can't you can't know two over three x is not the same. Cosine. Uh, hold on y is equal to cosine of 2 divided by 3x. 2 divided by 3x is not the same thing as 2 thirds x. That's a different animal. Okay, I'll figure it out. I'm not going to worry about it right now. See, that's that. And that's not the same. 2 over 3x is not the same Hold on. Two thirds X is equal to two X 
over three. Two thirds X is not equal. Two over three X is not equal to two thirds X. OK, if you put the X in the bottom, that's not the same thing. So if I'm going to write it, it's going to be one of these two. So you might have meant 2x over 3. Is that what you meant? Uh, no, sir. That's just how Miss Harbett said that she did it. And whenever I did it, I was able to get the same exact graph as the as textbook. The book? Yes, sir. All seriousness. OK, now it's working. I don't know. Zoom. Zero. Oh my God. Try using Zoom trig. Yeah, thank you. Zoom. Trig. I think that's down at the bottom. Seven. Seven, yeah. There, is that better? Yes, sir. And each one of those, each one of those tick marks is um that's pi over two, pi. Yes. yes, sir. So, in other words, if you move this over, uh, if I move it over, let's zoom out just a little bit. And I'm going to move it over right here. And then I'm going to blow it up. I'm going to do something right quick. Zoom box. And I'm going to go from here to that first, right about there. Yeah, it's a period. There's the period right there. Right here is one period. Now, if you want to do a trace, second trace, and this is, I'm glad we're doing this. Because this, this is exactly what I wanted to do today. I wanted to show you how to get around. And if you look right in there, that should be 2 pi right there. Which is 3, 7 point 1, 2, close enough, right in there. So, and you see that, you know, the cosine starts from right there. And you go down, then up, and it keeps on going. There's one right there. And that would be like three pi. That would be your period right there. From zero to three pi. So I want you to be able to graph on your calculator, and I don't know why I had to put it like that, but that's right. Uh, 2 divided by 3x is not right. That would not be right. But 2x over 3, that's okay. I don't know why it wouldn't take it the other way, but anyway, I'm not going to fuss about it. Let's look to continue with the... And that's what it looks like right there. And there's 3 pi right there. So when you're graphing by hand, and that's why I'm saying we used to graph by hand. When I was in trig, you you put it in three ways in my calculator, and they all came out the same. Well, evidently I was doing something wrong, Mr. Johnson. I don't know. Maybe 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 the Russians have taken over my calculator. Um, find the period, start with zero, and mark the distance off of two pi over b. Divide the interval into four equal parts. So you take 2 pi over b, or whatever that comes out, divide it by 4, or multiply it by 1 fourth. Evaluate the function for each of the five values and then plot it. But you don't have to do this. You just have to do, here's one right here, negative 2 sine of 3x. So you type that in. Negative 2 sine of 3x, <clears throat> excuse me, 3x, and hit graph. And of course, I would hit zoom trig again. 7. And I would just make sure 
that I knew goes from here, one revolution right here. Now, of course, you would take three, and that would be two pi over three. That would be your period. Now, on the test or the homework, I'm just going to ask you the period, and you calculate that, two pi over three. And then divide, so I would take um, 2 pi over 3, and I would divide it by 4. So 2 pi over 3 divided by 4. Uh, divide by 4 over 1, we go to 1 over 4, and then that would be your first quarter, and then add it and add it, just like you would if you were doing 0 to 8. Okay, you just divide it by 4 and then add those back. Now, you don't have to go through. This is what our teacher used to make us do in trig. You don't have to do this. Okay. Uh, these are horizontal. This is for your tangent. You're going to see that, and that's the horizontal shift. It's called a phase shift. When you're talking about uh, trig, you're talking about a phase shift. And they're going to ask you that on a test or homework. What is the phase shift? Now, in trig, it is, translate the graph, D units to the right. If D is greater than zero, it's to the left. And left, if it's right, is greater than zero. With trig, you go with the plus is to the right and negative is to the left. With algebra, it's different. So this one's got a negative shift of pi over three. When that would be two pi over pi over three. Well, no, it wouldn't. It would be left pi over three. And there would be zero x negative pi over three and then you would get that right there but again you don't have to do that because they already give you the shift if you did sign let's just do sign y is equal to sign sine of x close parentheses and then I'll do this in a darker and I'll do sine of x minus pi over three. Close parentheses. There's our regular function, and you should see it go to the left. There it is. It's over to the left, pi over three. So here, and then going to the left, pi over three. I'm sorry, it is right. I thought it was right. I don't know why they said that in the, okay, I was right. It is pi over three to the right. Okay, I read that last slide wrong. I guess I should go with what I know instead of what I'm reading. Let me go back to that. If D is greater than zero, no. If D is negative, it's going to the right. If D is positive, it's going to the left. Just like algebra. I don't know why they want to screw things up in these slides. Okay, so everything shifted over to the right. So instead, so if you had pi over, if you had zero, you would add pi over three. Right there. Again, I'm not going to be very particular on this. There's your vertical shifts. So this one is negative two cosine of three x plus three. So you're gonna have a vertical shift 
of three up. It's going to be going in the opposite direction because A is two. So in this problem, and there's the period, that would be two pi over three. So here, this question, I'm going to go ahead and draw what this one looks like. Y is equal to negative two cosine of three X plus three. All right, so I'm going to take my handy dandy and I know that my regular cosine, here's one, negative one, two, negative two. All right, my regular cosine, I know, starts at the top. Okay, it starts at one, and it goes down, and comes back up, and goes there. Okay, and that's two pi. We know that that's two pi on the regular. Two, negative two, that negative right there, tells me we're going in the opposite direction. It tells me that, that we're going in this direction. That's what that negative tells me. The two tells me that it's going up to two instead of one. So I'm going here. And this tells me I'm doing a vertical shift of three. So that means I'm going to go up three from here. One, two, three. So I'm actually going to be drawing it like that. I'm not going to get all persnickety because you can type this in your calculator. And I'm going to type it with cosine. Y is equal to cosine of X. So you'd hit cosine. And then down here, we're going to type in negative 2 cosine of 3X. Close parentheses plus 3. And there's our cosine function. And then, of course, you see that it's shifted up. You can't really see it like compared to mine, but you see that it's shifted up. I'm going to go down a little bit. Zoom out. I'm going to go up a little bit right here. Just give me a second. And zoom box. Enter. And there's our line. There's the black line that I drew. And then you see that it's vertical shifted three up from where I was and it inverted it. So if you really wanted to get technical, you could go, Walter, come here. Sorry. Um, so if you really want to get technical, who is it? Okay, then I would put negative, be a negative cosine of X, negative cosine of X, close parentheses, delete, 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 and graph. All right, there is the regular cosine. There is the negative cosine. Now I'm going to add the negative 2. So I'm going to go Y is equal, negative insert, Two. Now watch what happens. There's your regular. And watch. Now it's stretching. It's going up a little bit. And then, of course, you add your third one. And that's going to be y is equal to. I'm going to add this. 
negative two cosine of three X. We're going to throw that three in there now. Three X close parentheses and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to change that to a dash line. And graph. And there it is. Because the period change is going to scrunch it up. And of course now you add the last and that's going to be negative two cosine of three X plus three. Now you might want to close parentheses there because it's going to be plus three like that. And hit graph and it sends it up there. See, that's what I want you to be able to do. I want you to be able to see what's going on. Instead of doing it by hand, I want you to do it in your calculator. Okay, what is it? You got to leave. Let's see, what time's class over? 12.35? Okay, I got a class in 15 minutes, so I got to go drive. Don't want to be counted absent today, Bridget. All right, Bridges, let me go up here and let's check our... Let's go ahead and check the attendance so that way we both get it done. And today is Thursday, it's y'all's Friday, but it's the same thing. Um, let's see, faculty, they had not logged me out, which they have. Attendance, I despise Tri-County Tech. Technically, technical, technology-wise, it's like working with a bunch of dinosaurs. Sorry. Y'all don't have to work with dinosaurs, do you? Nobody's going to say anything. Y'all got some dinosaur teachers? I had one I senior one. year. Bless your heart. 111 set attendance. Oh, we got perfect attendance. That's. Y'all were the perfect attendance I was looking for. Okay, so y'all are good. Y'all don't have to worry about it. Everybody's here, so I know I have to take attendance. Now, what I want y'all to do for homework, though, and I'm just going to get out of everything. We're finished today. What I want y'all to do for homework, if you're not working on tests or homework or whatever, then I want you to start working on 9.6 and 9.7. So you can actually play with your calculator and do all that good stuff with the calculator because I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on 9.6 and 9.7. I want if mean, y'all can use your calculators and you can graph it on your calculator. That's all that matters. I need to get to the identities and there's not a really a lot of reason to spend on graphing uh, trig functions by hand because you don't do that anymore. OK, so anyway, I'm going to shut her down. Does anybody have any questions before I leave or before I cut class off? OK, so all y'all need to do.